I taught SLS 1101 in the Student Development Department. Now, this is a course that covers a wide range of subjects from study skills and time management to personal health to the value of diversity on campus. It's a lot to cover in a semester, but I love teaching this course. Over the past couple of decades, I have read and watched and experienced a lot of what I want to incorporate into my teaching. There are TED Talks I want to use and a host of articles online. I also want to challenge students to find books that speak to their goals and their interests. However, when students purchase a $100 textbook, there's an expectation that we will extract the maximum value out of that investment. This poses a real dilemma for me. Do I use the materials that I've personally curated and skip a chapter here and there in the book that they've bought? Now, we've all taken a course where the instructor made us buy a text that they only marginally alluded to, and it's incredibly frustrating to spend money on something you don't use. The alternative is to build my course around a book that doesn't always approach the topic in the way that I would. I, I run the risk of just covering the content because I'm not as invested in the presentation of the topic. By choosing to use an open textbook, I was freed from having to choose between the materials I curated and the course textbook. I could use as much or as little of the open text as I thought necessary. Students are then freed from that investment bias that says that the most important thing in is the text that they paid for and the belief that all of the free stuff is, in fact, supplemental. Hi, I'm Andy Shepard, and I'm an instructional designer here at Santa Fe College's Center for Teaching, Technology, and Training. We promote the use of open educational resources through a number of activities. One of the avenues that we use is through the facilitation of media-related workshops. Now, in addition to having a fully equipped media studio, we also provide training to faculty on a number of video topics to help instructors independently create their own video content. Whether the video content is computer-based, such as a narrated slide presentation, or a more traditional talking head style, we assist faculty with sharing their experiences and their expertise with students through video. Now, while saving our students the financial costs associated with commercially produced instructional materials is tremendously important, the creation of OERs also help our college address issues related to accessibility. It's not unusual for commercially produced instructional materials to be inaccessible. In fact, sometimes it's by design. A publisher may not want students to copy and paste instructional material from their text, resulting in content that can't be read by screen readers. Through the creation of OER content, faculty can start with accessibility in mind and work towards our college's goal of creating an inclusive learning environment. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Debbie Blair from Santa Fe College in Gainesville, Florida. We started our OER initiative last October and were pleasantly surprised to find that many of our faculty were already saving students money, close to $212,000, including two complete courses using OERs. This spring semester, student savings are over $367,000. Needless to say, we are ecstatic at the savings, but also with the willingness of faculty to use OERs. As we know, it takes some work to move from a textbook with all the content and ancillary materials provided to using open resources, creating those materials and exams from scratch. But in the end, it's worth the effort. The other part of using OERs that I'm grateful for comes from the OER community. The willingness to share materials and the support that I've received is amazing and much appreciated. Thank you to all who are part of this endeavor.